50 so in previous session we had discussed about how to use gear tooth vernier caliper for checking error in tooth thickness Now, to quickly summarize methodology, which is used by gear tooth vernier caliper, uh, gear tooth vernier caliper for verifying gear tooth thickness error, we have seen uh, we have derived two equations. One is for the scrotal depth. One is for the uh, uh, for the theoretical value of scrotal depth d. And second derivation that is for uh, theoretical value of coral thickness, gear to coral thickness W. So, using those two equations, you can find out theoretical value of D, coral depth, and theoretical value of coral gear to thickness W. Now, in gear to vernier caliper, two verniers, vernier B and vernier E, they are arranged perpendicular to each other. So, we are having theoretical value of coral depth d that d we set on vernier b then that vernier b is movable joe that will be kept on top land of gear tooth and then after we are closing vernier e movable joe of vernier e then identically if you do that then these two Jews of vernier E, they will make contact on two involute profiles, two opposite involute profiles of gear T at location A and B. And now the value which you read on vernier E, that is practical value or the actual value of codal thickness W. Now you are having theoretical value of codal thickness and you have practical value of codal thickness from vernier uh, this one year caliper. So variation in the coral thickness that is indirect indication of variation in the gear tooth thickness. So this is what the basic methodology of gear tooth one year caliper for checking gear tooth thickness error. But this method they are having two main limitations because to measure practical value of coral thickness you need to set theoretical value of d on vernier b so if you do any mistake in setting this d codal depth on vernier b then by default you get error in the measurement of actual codal thickness because if you are doing mistake in setting this small d on vernier then then movable juice of vernier E, they will make contact somewhere else instead of making contact at A and B. Okay, so this is one limitation because your actual value of codal thickness that is function of codal depth. So any error in codal depth D setting, then that is indirectly change your codal thickness measured coral thickness so that is one limitation second limitation is we need to measure this line ab so that uh, such that this two jaws of vernier they make exactly at contact ab means at that time when when jaws of vernier e they are making contact with the involutes of gear teeth at that time this gear teeth should be symmetrically arranged between these two faces. Otherwise, if they are not symmetric, then you may get AB, you may get AB something like this. I am hexagrating this. You may get You may get a b something like this instead of this horizontal line you get some inclined line then again if it is inclined as per the a b's principle you get more value than the actual value so these are the two limitations of gear to vernier caliper method one is your measured value your measured 
w is function of setted value of d that is one and second is whenever you are holding any gate in between the uh, joes of vernier e at that time this this teeth should be symmetrically placed between two otherwise you get some inclined line measurement okay so these are the two limitations and that's why now we are going to discuss next method which is base tangent method which remove this issue these two issues how that we will see but before that just consider you have this as a base circle can you consider one base tangent this line ab line ab is tangent to base circle that's why line ab uh, sorry line ac is called as a base tangent and this line ac is making contact with base circle at point b now just just assume that you are rolling this line ac towards left then new position of contact point b would be b2 a new position of point a end of line a would be a2 and second end point c would be c2 so this is the new position of line similarly if you now roll this ac line towards right the new position of contact point b would be b1 and new positions of two end points would be a1 and c1 now during this to and fro motion of base tangent if you place end points of base tangent then they will give you two opposite involute profiles they will give you two opposite involute profiles now as per the definition of involute if you rule line says that this a2 will be on base circle at point a0 similarly if you roll a c line says that the c point comes in contact with base circle at c0 point then you can say line ac is equals to arc a0 c0 that is as per the definition of involute curve okay so line ac is equals to a0 c0 on uh, arc a0 c0 on base circle that is based on the principle of involute now this two opposite involutes they can be of any number of teeths right now if you see in this image i have considered three teeth teeth number 1 2 and 3 now you can see initial position of base tangent that is a1 b1 c1 and contact point is b1 now if you roll base tangent a1 b1 c1 to and fro on base circle then you get new positions of two end points and this contact point and you get two opposite involute profiles so in this image you can see we have considered base tangent for three number of teeths 1 2 3 clear so length of base tangent depends on how many number of teeths you are considering how many number of teeths you are considering but length of this all lines like a1 b1 c1 is equals to a2 b2 c2 is equals to a3 b b3 c3 this all are representing same line so length of this all lines remain same okay similarly if you roll this line says that this a end that comes in contact with base circle at point p uh, p here similarly you roll this base tangent on other side says that the c make contact on base circle at point s then again as per the definition of involute curve base tangent a b c is equals to arc on base circle ps arc ps on base circle here yeah? so this is what the basic understanding of involute curve now in this method again what we are doing to check gear to thickness error we are measuring actually base tension we are measuring base tension so we need to measure this line length and it is possible to measure line length by any linear measurement instrument so in this diagram you can see we have considered on four number of teeth and you can use now any linear measurement instrument here micrometer is shown so to 
two faces, measuring faces of micrometer, they are holding any number of teeth and we are measuring length of base tension. Yeah, because actual gear to thickness is arc length. So to check error in gear to thickness, we are measuring here base tangent length using any linear measurement instrument. And now base tangent is a line, it's a straight line length, so that we can measure by any instrument. So in this image, you can see we have used micrometer to measure base tangent length. But using micrometer, you get practical value or the actual value actual value of base tangent on manufactured gear but we need to compare this actual length against theoretical length of base tangent now theoretical length of base tangent to find the theoretical length of base tangent we need to derive equation of base tangent so that we will see now next but before that you can see here so this base tangent as per this sketch you can consider this base tangent a b c is equals to arc p s this red color arc p s on base circle okay so now we are deriving equation of base tangent in this image you can see length of base tangent is actually arc p s is equals to a1 c1 is equals to a2 c2 is equals to a3 c3 so this a1 c1 a2 c2 and a3 c3 they are nothing but different positions of tangent line different position of base tangent on pitch circle so this are same but now if you look here if i connect this p with the center of gear by straight line similarly s S point I connect with the center of gear by straight line then the overall angle angle covered by base tangent is this much then next what I do I connect this pitch point see which is called as a pitch point when you consider this this uh, this chain line curve which is part of pitch circle then this pitch circle cuts this involved profile at p dash point similarly on this side it cuts p dash point so this arc p dash to p dash this arc p dash to p dash that is present on pitch circle which is cut by two opposite involved profiles here we have considered three you can consider s number of teeth that is variable so in this derivation we will consider uh, one variable which is considered here as a s see here s capital s so capital s is number of teeth on which you are measuring base tangent length so here you can see we have measured base tangent for four number of teeth in this case you can see we are measuring a uh, uh, base tangent length for three number of teeth. So that is variable. S is a variable. So number of teeth for which you are, do, uh, you are measuring base tangent that is called as a capital S. So now you can see here, I am connecting this P dash also with the center of gear using this straight line. Similarly, on this side also, I am connecting this P dash point which is cut by this right side involute on pitch circle that is p dash point by straight line to the center of gear then these two lines which are connecting center of gear with the pitch points they are also cutting this base circle at two points one is a point q and second is point r now if you recall involute function then what is involute function this angle between this line which is from P and this line which is from Q angle between these two lines that is called as a involute function delta this is what we discussed in previous session similarly on this side also same delta angle between line from R and line from S that angle is called as a involute function delta 
and we know relation of delta with pressure angle so delta is equals to 10 phi minus phi you can see here this is what we derived in previous session delta is equals to 10 phi minus phi so if you are not able to remember it you can uh, refer our previous sessions from that you get this relation so these two deltas uh, delta equation is given in terms of pressure angle now when we manufactured any gear in design drawing of that gear pressure angle is clearly mentioned so we know pressure angle of our manufactured gear so we, we can easily find out what should be the value of delta what should be the theoretical value of delta so if i want to find out now again we go back to how to derive equation of base tangent so actual base tangent is this straight line abc but this abc is also equals to arc P Q R S this red color arc P Q R S so P S R is equals to base tangent length now to so length of this arc P S that is base tangent length now to find that length you can apply simple trigonometry angle is equals to arc upon radius so total angle covered by this segment of circle P S so total angle is how much theta this theta plus 2 times delta that angle is equals to arc arc ps divided by radius of that arc so this arc is present on base circle so radius of this circle is rb so rb is base circle radius so we can write now length of arc ps is equals to theta plus 2 delta rb this is our equation number 1 now a relation of rb that we know in terms of rp that we will see later but next now in this equation theta is unknown so now to find that theta what we are doing we are extrapolating this q point on p circle then we are getting p dash here similarly we are extrapolating this r point on p circle then we are getting p dash so this theta is angle covered by RQR as well as angle covered by arc P dash to P dash on pitch circle. So again here applying same equation angle is equals to arc upon radius. So now angle is theta. So theta is equals to arc upon radius. So on this circle this theta covers RQR. So that's why QR divided by rb is written because this qr is present on this circle similarly this theta is also equals to now if we consider p circle then arc is p dash to p dash then theta is equals to p dash to p dash r divided by now it is p circle so we need to consider radius of p circle then here we have written rp so theta is equals to r p dash to p dash divided by rp this is our equation because we want to find out now theta now after finding this theta next is see to find this theta you should know what should be the length of p dash to p dash okay we want to find out uh, this p dash to p dash then how much this theta is actually if you consider here angle covered by circular pitch on pitch circle angle uh, angle covered by one circular pitch one circular pitch means from p dash to suppose this involute profile what is circular pitch actually circular pitch is length of arc on pitch circle cut by two similar involutes of successive teeth so length of arc cut on pitch circle so this is our pitch circle so length of arc cut on pitch circle by two similar involutes of two successive threads so this involute to this involute then angle this much of angle from p dash to next similar p dash point on next teeth so this length is called as a circular pitch then how much angle covered by one circular pitch 
if you consider full circle then angle covered by full circle is 2 pi then 2 pi divided by if i consider number of teeth then i get this angle of one circular piece so that is what our next equation number 3 2 pi divided by 3 that is angle covered by each circular pitch. Now we move to next. If you are considering four number of teeth, for example, in this image, angle uh, teeth 1, 2, 3, 4, then how many circular pitch are covered actually? One teeth, then one circular pitch, second teeth, then second circular pitch, third teeth, then third circular pitch, and if you consider four teeth, then only half of the circular pitch because one circular pitch that covers to thickness as well as space angle angle covered by the space between two teeth so if you see in this image then one circular pitch is angle covered by teeth thickness as well as angle covered by one space so this is called as a circular pitch okay so if you consider s number of teeth then total angle of this arc this arc is equals to 2 pi by n that is angle by one circular pitch that is multiplied with s and if i multiply it with s means if four number of teeth then that will give me angle covered by total four circular pitch but this angle if you look in this, this angle is not, it, it is actually slightly lesser than angle covered by S number of teeth. Now how much less? I need to subtract one space angle. One space angle. Because if you look in this diagram, if I consider four number of teeth, then one circular pitch, second circular pitch, third circular pitch, and in fourth teeth, we are only considering angle half angle of circular pitch because half angle of circular pitch is covered by teeth and remaining half is covered by space but when you are holding four number of teeth then space angle is not considered so this theta this angle this theta is actually equals to 2 pi by n into s minus i need to subtract space angle so space angle is half of circular piece. So that's why circular piece angle is 2 pi by n into 1 half. Then theta is equals to this much of angle. So equation 4 is giving us value of theta. So after finding this theta, let us put value of theta in equation 2. Then in equation 2, if you put theta, then P dash to P dash, P dash to P dash into, uh, if you put this theta in equation 2, then you get value of P, P dash. So P, P dash R is equals to R P into this angle theta. So I got R P into theta. Now, if you see equation 1, then equation 1 is for PS, now PS is nothing but length of this tangent. So here capital M is used as an abbreviation of this tangent length. So M is equals to PS is equals to now. See this theta is equals to S minus 1 by 2, 2 pi by N. We got this theta. Then we are directly putting equation 4 in equation 1 then s minus 1 by 2 2 pi by n that is value of theta plus 2 into delta delta uh, 2 into delta but delta is equals to 10 phi minus phi as per this relation so 2 into 10 phi minus phi and now rb is written in terms of rp means base circle radius is written in terms of p circle radius and pressure angle phi so this relation also we have derived in our very first session on gear metrology so that you can refer from there you get this relation rb is equals to rp cos phi so i replace here rb as rp cos phi now rp cos phi is nothing but equals to n m by 2 where n is number of total number of teeth on any gear wheel into m m is module 
and divide by 2. This relation is based on definition of module because module is equals to p circle diameter divided by total number of pits n. From there we got this relation so I replace this rp by nm by 2 cos phi and then after if I simplify this equation I will get equation of base tangent length which is tan phi minus phi minus pi by 2 n plus pi s by n into nm cos phi. Now in the data in the design data of gear value of module is given pressure angle is also given then n n that you can easily count or that is also given on drawing of gear so we know all the quantities n m phi and now s is variable because s is to be decided by inspector is to be decided by operator on how many number of teeth you are doing based engine me uh, length measurement so here if you see four number of teeth are used then s should be four and if you are using three number of teeth then value of capital s is should be three if you are using seven number of teeth to measure base tangent length then you can use capital s value as a seven so that is actually variable that is free choice of the operator that you can select so now we have analytical relation of base tangent length now using this relation you can find out what should be the required length of base tension if gear to thickness is correct. So from this equation you get theoretical value of m and using micrometer you can measure value of m. You can measure value of m then you get actual value of m actual value of base tangent length theoretical value of base tangent length is already known from this equation now you can compare variation in the length of base tangent that is indirect indication that you have variation in the length of gear to thickness so again this method is not measuring gear to thickness but by measuring Variation in base tension length, we are judging whether gear to thickness is correct or not. But this method is more accurate compared to vernier caliper method. The reason is in vernier caliper method, in vernier caliper method, what you are doing, you are setting. You are setting codal depth and then you are measuring codal width. So if you do any error in measuring, co uh, in setting codal depth, then you get error in measurement of codal thickness. But here we are not doing that, we are measuring only one quantity, M, which is not function of any other predetermined quantity. So that's why only one measurement. So one, one limitation of gear to vernier caliper is removed here because we are only measuring one quantity which is not function of any other quantity. Second limitation of gear tooth vernier caliper is about you need to hold teeth such that uh, you need to hold teeth between two jaws of vernier such that teeth is symmetrically mesh. But that limitation is also removed here because you measure if your instrument if these two jaws they are at any angle if you place it at any angle and if you measure a a1 to c1 length or a2 to c2 length or a3 to c3 length then this all are same so there is no limitation of orientation there is no limitation of orientation you need not to take care of arranging your instrument says that this all gears they are sim uh, this all teeth they are symmetrically kept between the jaws so this limitation is also removed by base tangent that's why base tangent would be more accurate compared to gear to vernier caliper method. Okay, but both of these methods they are having again one limitation. If you look in this slide, limitations of both the methods, gear to vernier caliper method as well as base tangent method. If you see this, we derive these two equations. 
where W is codal thickness and D is codal depth. In this equation, if you look, they are function of N and M means module and total number of teeth. Similarly, this equation is of length of base tangent. Then this equation is also function of N and M and pressure angle phi. So just assume that you are having total five different gears. You have five different gears. They are having same module. Module is same. M is same for all five gears, but they are having difference in total number of teeth. Means one gear that is having 10 teeth, second gear is having 20, third gear is having 30, fourth gear is having 40 number of teeth, fifth gear is having 50 number of teeth, but all these five gears, they are having same module. Then what happened? Then you need to repeat this you need to uh, you need to calculate m for all those five years because although they are having same module but they are having change in number of teeth so you need to you you need to find out base tangent length for all five different gears similarly if you use v, uh, gear tooth vernier caliper then again uh, codal width and codal depth they are function of n and m so all five gears which are having same module but if they are having change in number of teeth then again value of codal width or the codal thickness would be different so in this way we are not able to uniformly apply these two methods for n number of gears which are having same module Okay, so this is the limitation of both the methods which is overcome in constant code method. So in next session we will discuss about constant code method. So far refer uh, gear to thornier caliper method and base tangent method. Okay, have a happy lesson.